Jason, John, for a very informative session. I certainly don't have to um, reiterate what you just heard, but if you're not partnered with, uh, <coughs> with our public workforce system, I hope the stories you heard um, just now will help to inspire some of the decisions that you'll make uh, moving forward. Um, John Caldelli had to leave. I, I, wanted, I wanted, wanted to thank him um, before he left, but I'll do that now. And Liam is here, so Liam, you can let him know we especially appreciate the time that he came to share with us. Um, right before I introduce this next person, um, a lot of the, uh, what was shared with uh, you this morning are, is just some of the things that we looked at over the last two years as we um, dig deeper into what's going on in the Bronx. Uh, many of you, in your package, you will have a, a, a documentation of the effort um, here in the Bronx, looking at the 16 to 25 year old, anything that you want to know about them and everything you want to know about them, where they're working, where they're going to school, where they're going to college. Um, and in here, you'll see where the largest employment sectors are in the Bronx. Uh, so this is, you know, on your own time, you know, when you're on the train, or eating lunch, um, take some time to look through here so you can learn a little bit more about what motivated us to come here today. Um, you heard the term DYCD uh, mentioned on the panel. That is the New York City Department of Youth and Community Development. Um, at this time, I'd like to introduce um, Andre White, who is the Associate Commissioner for Youth mm -hmm. Workforce Development. Andre? Partnering um, our panel this morning, or I'm partnering with workforce professionals. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. How's everyone feeling? Good. It's always good to see so many familiar faces in the audience and the faces <laughs> that are not familiar. Hello. <laughs> um, as Marjorie said, my name is Andre White. I'm the Associate Commissioner for Youth Workforce Development Programs at DYCD. I've been at DYCD for the past 10 years. It's been an amazing journey. I started my career back in the Soviet Employment Program as the Deputy Director, worked my way up to Associate Commissioner. Um, so with that said, how many folks in the room are familiar with DYCD? Awesome. So as you know, the mission of DYCD is really to improve the quality of life for New Yorkers by working with local CBOs, by investing our talents and assets into communities with the hope that they will grow and thrive. Within DYCD, there's a number of divisions. As I said before, I manage the workforce division. Currently, our budget stands at over $150 million, and we have six, well, seven now unique programs across the portfolio. But before I sort of jump into and the programs that we have at DYCD, I think it's important for folks to understand how we view young people in general, right? Every young person that comes through a CBO door, they're very different. One prescription doesn't fit all. So we meet young people where they are, and that's very important and critical to the success of any program that you implement working with young people. I know there's been a lot of conversations around disconnected youth, particularly in the city for the past few years. And what we have recognized, in order for, in order for any program serving this population, you have to be very strategic in, in the way you approach it. As Greg mentioned before, the technical training aspect is very, very important. But what we have learned over the years is that the, the support service, the case management piece of it, is also critical. Because what we recognize, these young people, they're disconnected for a reason, correct? Yes? Yes, yes, yes? And there are so many barriers to, em to employment. For example, our providers um, have said to us at DYCD, while these young people really want to get some sort of credential to eventually move on to a full-time job, there are so <coughs> many barriers preventing them from doing so. Why? They might be homeless, right? They might have a young child that they have no babysitter for. And we came up with a system to address these issues. Particularly, there's a very, very intense assessment process when they come through our door. And we don't like to turn people away. That's not, we're not in the business of turning people away. But we have to be pragmatic and realistic. And we have to recognize when a young person is ready for training and ready for employment. Uh, we work with our partners across the city, HRA, 
Um, we work with ACS, and if we recognize a young person's illness, we also work with DHS to make sure that we provide the support services that they need. Once we believe that they're stabilized, then we believe they could come into our programs, get trained, get equipped with the skills that they're looking for, and then move on to employment. So I just want to set that straight. That's the philosophy that we implement at DYCD. So let me sort of talk about a few of the programs that we have currently. The Summer Youth Employment Program, which I'm sure many of you guys are very familiar with. SYP has been around since 1963. It's very much a part of New York City's fabric. It's very much a New York City institution. And I'm sure many folks in this room have gone through the program, correct? Awesome. Um, just to give you some quick stats, last year we served 60,000 participants across 11,000 work sites. Our budget last year was $93.4 million, um, and we intend to serve at least 60,000 young people um, this summer. Um, we're confident that we'll be able to do that. But a very big part of the success of this program is working with employers, right? And what we have recognized over the years, while our providers are great at social services and implementing new development principles in their programs, they, they're not really good at employer engagement, right? They don't exactly know how to engage the private sector. Um, and what we have done, we have worked with WPTI, which is a Workforce Professional Training Institute, um, to create a professional development training program for providers on how to engage the private sector. And this sort of came out of a study that was conducted by uh, UPenn, the Wharton School of Business, where they recognize that there are a lot of all the work sites that our, our providers were developing were particularly in the nonprofit sector, which is not necessarily a bad thing, but also they felt like we need to diversify additional work sites in the private sector. Um, as a result of this effort, we're able to increase the number of private sector jobs from 28% to almost 40%. And I think that's amazing. As a result of that, we've seen a lot of young people being exposed to more tech, um, work sites, manufacturing, um, and also financial sites. Um, SYP has four service options. I'm not sure if you guys are familiar with them. There's a track for younger youth, a track for older youth, a track for vulnerable youth, and those are young people who are facing significant barriers for employment. They might be in the foster care system, going away homeless, um, justice involved, or receive, receiving preventive services through ACS. And the fourth option is the Ladders for Leaders option. You guys should have received a brochure. In the back of the room, we have our Director of Corporate Relations, Delcy. And Delcy's job is, she's responsible for developing um, employer relationships for DYCD's program, particularly the Ladders for Leaders program. And Ladders for Leaders actually began back in, uh, I want to say, 10 years ago, because we recognized, unfortunately, that employers wanted to interview candidates. They didn't want to just select a kid from a lottery, which is how the SYEP process works currently. And we recognized for this to be successful, we had to carve out a separate section for the Lattice Leaders Program. Uh, we're always looking for employers. So if there are folks in the room who are, who are interested in partnering with the Lattice Leaders Program, feel free to talk to Delcy uh, at the end of the conference. The second program I want to talk about is our WIA Elder School Youth Program. We're in the process of changing the names of our program based on very governmentish right now. So uh, if you know any young person between the ages of 16 to 21, out of them visit our website at DYCD, there's actually a rebranding re competition happening right now, and the winner will get a iPad 2. So I encourage any young person to visit our website. So the OSY program is really geared towards young people who are not in school, not working, ages 16 through 24. And this is funded primarily through the federal government through WIOA funds, which is the Workforce Investment Opportunity Act. Currently, we're serving 1,500 young people across all five bars. We have over 24 providers conducting the services for us. Prior to the new program that started last July, we were really focused on CBOs doing the training, the technical training, as well as the wraparound services for our participants. After a few <laughs> difficult conversations with um, the CBO community, we recognized that we had to kind of carve out a separate option for some of the CBOs who are great at working with young people, but not necessarily working or training young people when it comes down to certain skill sets. 
So there are two service options that we offer in that, um, in that program. The first service option is for young people who might not necessarily have a high school diploma, so we do provide um, the task services as well. But young, a young person who wants a short-term intervention. So they come through our doors, they have an opportunity to get training in Microsoft Office, they have, a, they have an opportunity to get a CDL license, or the food and the certificate. Once they have attained their credentials and attained the task, or if they already have their GED or their high school diploma, we are partnered with CUNY to offer six trainings across seven CUNY colleges. And some of those trainings are credit bear trainings, which is important because I think a lot of young people, because they haven't been a part of the school system, they don't think they could go to college, right? They think it's above them, you know? And what we have recognized, oh, three minutes, okay. Uh, <laughs> what we have recognized is that once you expose a young person to the notion that college is possible, Right, and you know, and they're in that same environment. They see other folks attending colleges, uh, the same college. They think it's also doable for themselves. So I'm gonna have three minutes. I'm gonna try and wrap as quickly as possible. The second program is the the third program, rather, is the Young Adult Internship Program. This program was created back in 2008 through the Center for Economic Opportunity, which was a part of Mayor Bloomberg's Anti-Poverty Initiative. And this program is really a 14-week internship, very, um, I would say, light touch, not as intense as our other school youth program. For young people, 50% of them already have their high school diplomas. They, for some strange reason, they have gotten off some sort of path. Uh, we want to get them reconnected to a job or to school. They can work up to 25 hours a week, and we pay them at the minimum wage. Um, and the last program I want to talk about is our Work, Learn, and Grow program. Two years ago, the city council invested $16.1 million to create a year-round program for, for young people who are in school um, and are working. So ideally, it's a challenge for us because we recognize a lot of parents who want their, their children to focus on their academics and not so much focus on work throughout the school year. And we have seen there a big drop off throughout the school year. So we're looking at tweaking that program, tweaking that model to make sure that there is a balance between academics and, and working for the young people who want to participate in the program. So with that said, you know, at DYCD, I implore you to visit our website, talk to myself or talk to, to Dulcie after the conference just to find out more about our programs. We have an amazing, obviously, talent pipeline that you can definitely recruit from, particularly for those young people who are not in school and are working. Our programs, I would say, is best in class. We're working with some of the best providers across New York City and also working with CUNY to make sure that they have the skill sets that you guys need. Um, and again, whatever young person you need, whether somebody for six weeks, for 12 weeks, for a year, uh, we could definitely supply that to your organization. Do I take questions? I do. Questions? <laughs> hey, So first at DYCD, we have implemented a employer survey at the end of each of our programs, which was not done until maybe five years ago. I think it's important to understand the employer's needs and the voice of the employer. And that simply means that understanding the skill sets that they're looking for, the, um, the type of young person that they're looking for, and also the motivation as to why they want to be involved in the program, right? What is the value add for the employer? And as long as that's explained clearly and expressed to the employer, I think it's important to actually combine the skill sets and the, the young person to that opportunity. But also, I, I like to say to employers, this is not a charity case, right? Don't do this because you feel like it's something that you want to do. Do it because you want to invest into invest um, into a young person's future career pathway. And also take on a mentorship role. Um, what we have seen over the years with, with DYCD, a lot of employers want to participate in our programs. Um, unfortunately, they see uh, taking a 14-year-old or 16-year-old as a babysitting job, and we have, we have done a really great job of really kind of moving away from that stereotype by really creating a very, very strategic approach to how we recruit and how we kind of explain the purpose of SYP, the value add of SYP, the benefits of, of you know, participating in SYP. And I think that has penetrated somewhat, 
Um, and we've seen a lot more engagement with, with the private sector because of that strategy. I'm Sabine Parani, I'm with WPTI, the Workforce Professionals Training Institute. So thank you, Andre, for the, the, the shout out. Uh, but wanted to let you all know that we are um, you know, partnering with UICD, and this spring we'll be doing a borough-based event in the Bronx to bring together employers and CBOs. So be on the lookout for more information on that to really connect you with the community-based organizations that are funded by UICD. Awesome, thank you. All right, thank you guys.